G'day leaders. In this episode, we talk about goals and routines. We discuss why goals don't create happiness. They're important, they give you direction, but they don't create happiness. And we talk about routines and some of our favorite routines. Enjoy. Why did it count backwards? I know that we're now recording. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello, Captain. Oh, what do I Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? I don't know. So, leadership, life, and everything else. Yeah. And we're live! No, <laughs> we're recording. That was a good one, that one. Yeah, okay. I reckon I could be in the middle of a boxing ring with that, with that one. <laughs> uh. Michelle. I need you. Oh. <laughs> we had this moment this morning. In the we pool. Went, in the pool, we went for a swim. And uh, Michelle said, I need you. I said, I'm here for you. And she said, no, I need you. I said, I'm here for you. I said, she said, no, I need you. I said, I'm always here for you. And she said, no, I, I, I hit you with my knee. <laughs> with my knee. <laughs> I hadn't even noticed. Oh, we are absolute lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh at the smallest thing. Mm. Yeah, okay. And all we'd have is coffee. <laughs> yes, exactly. And we're, we're still having it now. Yes, yes. Yes. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Guy. What are we talking about today? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I So, one thing I wanted to talk about was at um, your last keynote that I was in the audience for, yeah, yeah. you were talking about uh, how goals are not the key to happiness. No. Can I, you explain that yeah, further? Yeah, I learnt this. Oh, cracky voice this morning. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I learnt this from a cartoonist, um, you know, the Dilbert comic. Yes. Scott Adams, the cartoonist who does the Dilbert comic. He, um, I, I read it, uh, he, he said this, that goals don't create happiness. And I now agree. Um, the more I've looked at it, the more I've looked at his quote and the way he thinks about it is, um, yeah, it's really quite accurate. So when, when I was young, I was a very goal-driven man, you know. Um, I, you, you were too. You wanted to be a pilot and you got there eventually through all of those hurdles. And I, um, I had all these goals that I wanted to achieve in my life. Um, at one point in time, something triggered me and I started to set all these goals. I had all these goals and working towards these goals. But Scott Adams pointed out that goals don't create happiness the reason why they don't create happiness is because 99.9 .9 percent of the time you're not there mm -hmm. they're in the future they're, they're they're some point in the future and so when you spend a lot of energy focusing on the future as we've discussed before um, time starts to speed up and you're not in the present yeah. no you're not in the present and you're trying to drag the future towards you mm -hmm. and you get into this mindset i'll be happy when Mm -hmm. I'll be happy when. No, you won't, because when never happens. You get there, you already moved past it. Now you've got to be happy. You've got to set another goal. You've got to redirect. So goals don't create happiness because you're not there. And, and you get into this mindset, I'll be happy when. So you want to bring the future towards you quicker, So which means you're not in the present, you're not in the moment. And, mm -hmm. and um, all they do is create direction. Yeah, so... Could you reframe it as purpose? Like a goal gives you purpose, yep. not or and a direction, not the final outcome. So it's the enjoying the journey yep. and, and being in the journey yeah. rather than the that the goal is everything. Yeah, we, we, I guess we've all heard this before. It's the journey that matters, not the mm. destination, all that sort of stuff. But but that's the problem with goals is that they don't tell you that the goals are there to help help you make decisions and move towards them and give you direction but they <coughs> excuse me my, this, this throat of mine I, I, I sound like Barry White you, you swallowed a lot of pool water no, I did swallow too much pool water this morning um so the yeah the goals give you direction but they don't give you it, it's, it's not where happiness lies I it actually made me think about um a couple of guys and I'm saying guys meaning uh the group of pilots that uh, all they were interested in was getting into an airline, mm. uh, typically Qantas or going overseas. And so all of the general aviation flying that they did, they hated mm. because the, the goal was so many hours so that they could then apply and get into Qantas or yeah. get into to another airline. And which was really sad because some of my best flying was in general aviation and, and you know, being in, in shitty little aircraft and, and ones that had, you know, things missing and obviously not engines or wings, but, um, you know, instruments missing or you got to, to fly and, and contour fly or, or chat with people or go fast, go slow, stall, whatever. Um, 
that was some of the the great flying. Yeah. And these people that just hated it and turned up begrudgingly just to get the hours to then get to the airlines. I I would love to be able to question them, to ask them, you know, are you happy now? And mm. and did you find happiness once you got into? What a great example. So. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Because we've often spoken about how you had this, uh, I'm not sure who gave you the mindset, either you could fly a thousand, a hundred hours or a thousand hours. So, it was it's what, so I was told, because quite often when you did uh, freight flying or charter flying, mm. uh, even instructing, that you could do one hour a thousand times. So that is just go the in there and do the same thing again, over and, and over again. and over or a thousand hours each. So, so every time, mix it up, yeah. look for something else, be curious, like we discussed in a previous podcast, and, and look at different ways to, to fly that route, different altitudes, different power settings. Did you have that choice? You could, you could actually have different routes. You could, uh, you you, could, you could, you could fly could, different altitudes and stuff. You could kind of, not, yeah. not airline flying, but yeah, yeah. Um, you, you could. And mm. also, it just gave you, you know, you looked out the window and you, you saw landmarks that you may not have noticed before. or mm. you. Mm. So, it was just mixing it so up. So, flying different... in the present rather than with yeah. a goal to get to an airline. Absolutely, because a... the weather's not the same always. Yeah. And, you know, the fuel load, the, the payload weren't the same. So, just try different things safely, obviously. But yeah. it gave you your envelope of comfort expanded. And I'd guess, this is just a guess, that, those pilots that were just aiming to become uh, an airline a captain or an airline first officer or whatever, um, and they hated the path to get there, mm. that creates a pattern. Yes. Right? And then yeah. but when, they're, when they're actually there, how do they then suddenly switch into happiness? Oh, I'm well, a pilot. Look at me. I, I'm have, in the I think I've actually mentioned this previously that what do you call a group of pilots? A whinge. <laughs> 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 so it wasn't fun to hang out in the crew room sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so goals don't create happiness. They just give us direction, no, which is important in life. That's right. But, but we've discovered a way that as part of the journey yeah. to ensure happiness and ease throughout your life, throughout yeah. your day. Yeah, you don't. Even when things aren't going so great. That's it. You don't focus on goals. You focus on your routines. Mm, routines. Yeah. So what you do every day is going to be the determiner. Determiner? Is that even a term? <laughs> uh, the, that determinator. Will determ- <laughs> the determinator. That will determine the, the quality of your life. Um, uh, just going, I just reminded of a, of a quote I like. Uh, if a man knows not what harbour he seeks... Any wind is the right wind. Mm. So goals don't create happiness, but they're very important because they give you the direction that you're going to head in life. You don't just wander aimlessly, but they, they're not where, where happiness lies. Where happiness lies is in routines. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's what you do every day. That's right. And, and this is what Scott Adams was saying, the Dilbert comic, that if you focus on little things that you do every day that bring pl- pleasure into your life, that's mm. where happiness lies. Yeah. And so you and I both have um, very strong routines, don't we? We do. Mm. We do. So We, we listen to experts. And <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And, and, I think if you can tie it to something, so we're teaching the kids at the moment that when you uh, tie it, link it to something else. So mm. um, we used to have action flows and, and uh, in the aircraft so that if you forgot one thing, it, you, you had muscle memory basically. Yeah. And we're helping the kids build this mm. by creating routines and attaching something to something like it to a for a previous action to so, trigger the routine to trigger habits basically. Yeah. yeah so we we um first thing cuddle yeah the very first thing cuddle yeah, yeah. when you Have wake up of the morning because it raises oxytocin levels. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go through all of our routines. Uh, hugging. We're, we're both voracious huggers. Yes. We hug as many people as we can. because Neighbours, so, friends. Neighbours, friends. Yeah. Oh, I had a great hug the other day. I was, I was um, coming home from work and one of our neighbours had been overseas and uh, he was standing there talking to another neighbour of ours and I thought, oh, this is my opportunity. So I ran up and I gave them both a big hug and immediately you feel better because your body produces oxytocin. Mm. We've, we've discussed oxytocin, haven't we? I think we have, yeah. In another the podcast i know we speak about it all the time but if you don't know oxytocin is the hormone that's released into your body when you're feeling love and it helps you feel connection and and it's it's the happy chemical the love drug the moral molecule the empathy chem it's got lots of nicknames mm. but it's a it's a feel-good chemical and mothers get a big rush of it when they give birth yes so they'll bond with the child so hugging is in our routine mm. every day so we we hug then roll out of bed mm. 
and make, make the, bed. the bed. Yeah. yeah. So if you're one of those people that, like I was when I was a young man, when you get out of bed in the morning, make the bed. Why do we make the bed? <laughs> so that we can feel like we've achieved something. Yes. And if we've achieved nothing else, at least you have a made bed. Yeah, in the there's evening. a famous video on the internet about this, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. Because yeah. when you make the bed, you get a hit of dopamine, the reward chemical. Mm. And what you shouldn't do, which is what the majority of people do, and I, I, I constantly, constantly talk to people about this, don't grab your phone first thing in the morning. No. Yeah, this is all over the internet. Well, what, what we actually, I, I missed a step because we do breath work. Yes. So wake up, have a hug. Then do breath work. And people are now getting the picture there. <laughs> do breath work. Yeah. Three to four rounds. Yeah. So we do Wim Hof breath work. Yep. Yep. So um, did the Wim Hof course uh, quite a few years ago now. Fell in love with this man. He's just the most amazing man. But the, if you've never done breath work, it's, it's, it's you breathe powerfully into your stomach, your chest, and then into your head. <sighs> Like that's a power breath. You do that 30 or 40 times. You oxygenate your blood, but then on the 30th, 40th or 50th breath, depending on how long you want to go for, you just blow out all of your air. So you've got no air in your lungs and then just hold your breath. Mm. Mm. We can do it just over three minutes. What, what do you experience when you do it? Uh, so I generally go into a meditative state and I find that when I do that, I can my breath hold lasts longer. If I'm thinking in my head... Mm. Uh, about holding my breath, I start to feel like I need to take a breath. Hmm. So I do a body scan hmm. and start at my toes and anything that's hurting or I'm feeling pressure or anything really, I just work on the, the breath there, the, the oxygen that I'm imagining in my blood hmm. being directed to there and, and then work my way back up my body to hmm. my head. Um, I have fallen asleep sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I've started snoring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it can, can become almost um, like I'd imagine hallucination yeah. sort of. Yeah, I've seeing, seen psychedelic seeing, colors, yeah, colors. In, my, in, my, in my mind when I'm doing the breath hold. So 30 or 40 power breaths and then making sure that you're not blowing the air out. So you're not mm. hyperventilating. So you <sighs> And then just releasing. So you're not actually pushing it out. And then that breath hold. And in that breath hold, it's, it's such a beautiful meditative state, isn't it? Mm. Mm. And but then, then when you desperately need to breathe in, don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> you keep holding until your body starts to shake a little bit. Because then what happens is you get a dump of adrenaline into your body. And adrenaline is very, very healthy for humans. So my, my routine will always involve trying to get adrenaline into my body artificially through breath hold. Because when your adrenaline goes up, your immunity goes up. It triggers your immune system and a bunch of other things. It's actually quite a healthy thing. Mm. Uh, I learned adrenaline. Um, and then when you desperately need to breathe, you then breathe in and hold it for 15 seconds, squeezing the air up into your, into your head. And that's another explosion of colour yes. and vision that happens um, with eyes closed also when you mm. get that oxygen hit yep. and then so then after we've done that we and you then do three or four rounds of that. three or four rounds that's yep. right then we roll out of bed make, make the, the bed, bed. yeah because if you grab your phone um first thing mm. which a, a lot of people do your brain's getting a hit of dopamine the reward chemical from the phone and now your brain thinks oh that's where dopamine comes from so you start grabbing your phone you start swiping and scrolling and it's it's not a very healthy thing to those do. emails can wait yes exactly <laughs> and that instagram post doesn't oh, really need to be looked at the no, first thing in the morning no that's yeah, right you don't want to train your brain that you get dopamine from it from the phone you want to train your brain that you get dopamine from activities that are of value like making your bed whatever it is yeah. mm. Mm. well then we grab we have some lemon water yes with so some squeeze salt a lemon. if we if we think of it yeah squeeze squeeze a lemon into water and then drink a large large glass of water or more yeah um because when you sleep you dehydrate yeah then mm. we go for a walk and up hills backwards because we've got dodgy knees yes <laughs> <laughs> we read somewhere that it hel helps your knees <laughs> so my mate brett knows about my knees he had to carry my stuff some of my stuff across uh, tasmania because my knees blew out ah uh, yeah on a big hike and uh, shout out to brett the uh, the legend that he is um yeah, so we walk backwards up, up hills and it's done wonders for our knees, isn't it? It has. If you've got bad knees, walk backwards up hills. Yeah. It's hard. And there are some steep hills around where we yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, home to, you make the world's best coffee. Thank you. So we sit on the front veranda. Read a book. Read a book, have coffee, eat, each read a different book. Yes, and we often uh, start Discuss. talking to each other because you've read something in the book and you want to tell you, <laughs> hey, have you heard this? That's right, yeah. yeah. And what and, do you think about this? And that, that's magic that time. 
20 to 30 minutes of just reading every morning with a coffee, sitting at the front. Saying hi to neighbours that yeah. are walking past. There's mm. one particular neighbour, and I don't know if he does it now as a challenge, yeah. but he runs to the ferry, to the ferry. <laughs> at the end of the street. And we watch, and he's got young kids, and we think, okay, he was running late. But every day now, he's, he runs to the in his suit. Yeah. And it's like, mm, maybe one or two minutes earlier. <laughs> I want to talk about somebody with the coffee in the book. Yes. Phil Gouldson. Ah, we met yes. him in Darwin. Mm. So Phil Gouldson was the beautiful man who brought the International Men's Day to Australia. Yes, over 20 years ago, I think. Uh, it? Under, just no, on 20 years sure. ago. Yeah, it was a while back. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And Phil was at the men's forum that I spoke at up in, up in Darwin. And the most gorgeous human being. Like, isn't he? The pre- his presence? Like, yeah. I, I collect heroes. He's now a new one of mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he says that he and his wife, she's, he still hasn't perfected the coffee for his wife, though. <laughs> but they sit down and they have a coffee and, and read a book and um, they call them gold nuggets, don't yeah, they? Yeah, which is great. Golden nuggets throughout your day. And he was saying that he plants them yep. because he has previously suffered from depression. Mm. And he told the audience, all of the, the wonderful men that were in the audience, how never truly goes away it's always in the background yeah. however if you set yourself up for success yeah. every day by having these nuggets these even routines, when yeah. he's low he's got that to look forward to mm. and and again because that's tied to happiness yeah. for him yeah it can then either nullify like neutralize the the the, the low feeling yeah um and then start to give him purpose well, throughout doing, the day. He's doing something intentionally yes. to fight off the effects of depression through activities that bring dopamine mm. and, and serotonin and all of the feel-good chemicals. So he spoke about how he looked forward to making this coffee. I have the same feeling. Mm. When I'm standing there at the coffee machine and I'm trying to do the fancy patterns in the <laughs> milk, I'm thinking, oh, what are you going to think about this one? <laughs> it's like looking for pictures in clouds. It's it in coffee. It brings great joy to me to mm. feel like I'm doing something for another person when I'm making them a beautiful coffee and, and then sitting there reading a book mm. and discussing that book and just checking in. I mm. love being the recipient of your I coffee I will art. make coffee for you whenever you want one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, the next thing that's in my routine, uh, and I've encouraged so many people to do this, but so many people look at me and go, nah, not doing that one, a cold shower. Yeah. Yeah. So I have have your standard warm shower, mm. like everyone. Have your standard warm shower. And if you haven't looked up Wim Hof yet, if you haven't heard of Wim Hof, where have you been? <laughs> um, but I, I did his course years ago now. And so you have a you have a warm shower, and then at the end, take a big deep breath, turn all the hot off, all the cold on, and as the cold water hits your forehead, breathe out and relax. Just. And what happens is your body will start to release cold shock proteins, which which fight off the effects of, of stress and inflammation. And it's incredibly healthy for you. And when you get out of that shower, out of that cold shower, and especially in winter, winter is so good for this, you feel alive. Your body starts to heat itself back up again. You get this, this rush of dopamine. Your brain is clearer than it's ever been before. And you feel like you're radiating heat. Mm. You've just got out of a cold shower but you feel like you're radiating heat. And a lot of people go, oh, I could never do that. But they're focusing on that initial feeling of the cold water hitting them. Yeah. Right? But they're not focusing on how they're going to feel when they get out of the shower. And I keep saying, just do it. Just do it once or twice. And when, when you get to the third time, your body will be craving for this. Well, we watched that Netflix special <clears throat> with um, the kids. On, and it was Limitless. Chris, Chris, Chris Hensworth. Hensworth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was doing the, the cold, uh, the swimming. Yes. And we do cold plunge yes. occasionally at the skin bar the, in Roselle. That's right. Yes, the bathhouse. So um, that I struggle with the cold shower. Yeah. And however, the kids have all started doing the cold showers now, yeah. and I'm thinking, okay, if they can do it, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Every single person that I've recommended it to that has done it has said it's changed their life. Well, I enjoyed it when we were in Darwin because it was it's the cold. Not water. cold. <laughs> 
<laughs> Darwin water is not cold. I'm so I sorry, can't. Darwin. You cannot do this. You've got to go and get your ice bags from the server and throw them in the bath. But York shower is like pure cold in Darwin is like our, our warm in Sydney. I it's, didn't mind those cold oh, showers in Darwin. I not, felt like I was a hero. If that's your oh, definition cold of cold, showers. Michelle, we need to talk about temperature. <laughs> no, but I, I, I pumped myself up there. It's like, yes, I'm doing I cold did it, showers. I did it. Yeah, you're sitting in a lukewarm cold shower. Yes, yeah, anyway. like the pool. Yeah, but at the skin, shout out to Sam and, and Matt at the, the skin bar. Yes, they in, don't sponsor us. No, <laughs> but they're, they're friends of ours and we, we go up to the skin bar in Roselle and do our ice bars. So they've got two bars. Yes, uh, one, uh, two degrees and five degrees. Yep. I go the five degrees. I do the two. Yes, you're mm, psychopath. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and then the sauna I started after. In five. So, yeah, the, yeah. The, it's the amount of oh, feel good, everything that after doing the ice bath, two mm. rounds of the ice bath, and then oh, the sauna. It's extraordinary. It's, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my productivity goes through the roof yeah. and it's just my like, mental clarity yeah, yeah yeah that's right i can i can go through data and so if you think about it, three, minute, three minutes of pa- what people perceive to be pain it's not pain now for me my body now screams at me to do it i love it but you get into the cold water you, you slow your breathing down you just you, you connect your mind to your body and you just sit there for three minutes you get out of that cold uh, bath that's two degrees you're in iced water mm. and then when your body starts to heat itself back up the dump of dopamine that comes into your body that then stays in there for two hours is extraordinary well productivity wise i find i go from being reactive yeah to being proactive because and of the it sounds bath. a bit yeah silly yeah. but it, it it's is it's, it is that clarity of mind but also just that feeling of calm and peace mm. and so Rather than being up in my throat and in the top of my chest with energy, hmm. it is it is very calm. And it's almost like you can see everything happening around you and you can selectively pick and choose your reaction to it hmm. rather than just being like, ah. Uh, yeah. You know. I'm aiming for at least three ice baths a week now. Yeah. That's my routine. So routines aren't just what you do every day. It's, you can spread them out over the week or the fortnight or the month even. Yeah. So it sounds like we do a lot, but we get up early. We do. <laughs> so 5 a.m., 4.30, 5 a.m. Yep. to get all this in. Yeah. And yeah, it's and we're lucky the kids the kids can uh, kind of get themselves ready for school mm, in yeah, the morning. Yeah, make their lunches and, and yes. yeah, we're at that age now. That's right. So the saunas are amazing though, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, I used to struggle being in a sauna. I, 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 sauna. Yeah, I didn't like being overheated. It was always an uncomfortable feeling because your body's gone into hermetic stress. But the uh, research into saunas, and I learned this from Dr. Rhonda Patrick on, online. She's an um, amazing uh, scientist. But she said that um, the studies show that if you're in a sauna five times a week for 20 minutes each time at a certain temperature, you reduce your risk of all-cause more mortality so all causes of death by f- over 40 percent i'm going to live to be a thousand yes <laughs> <laughs> you love your saunas in 20 minutes and yeah I, I was in one the other day and i've i find it very hard to slow my brain down that's why i got into meditation which we'll talk about in a moment but I, you do the ice bath and you get into the sauna once once you don't jump straight back well i don't jump straight back in i let my body you now dump the dopamine in first heat up a little bit then i get into the sauna and the the peace that i experience in my mind is extraordinary for someone who's always had a racing mind, it's 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 amazing. So saunas are going to be a big part of my routine as well. Mm. Mm. And another thing we do is we book in, we schedule into our di- our calendar mm. a three day fast every month. Yes, fasting. Yeah, reg- which, <laughs> regrettably, we we kind of have to, don't we? <laughs> I know. Well, we've both got um, fair skin, pasty which, white. Let's, yes, let's be and honest. You we're, swimming. We're, we're, we look you, like ghosts. Well, we do, with freckles. <laughs> but with you, all of your water polo swimming and training mm. outside, yeah. you were... Um, Smashed by the sun. That's right. Mm. And I was a very, very silly, stupid teenage girl who thought that, you know, a tan was required when my skin just doesn't tan. It burns, then peels, then goes blotchy. And you also flew much closer to the sun, Icarus. <laughs> yeah, true. But it was... Um, so now, older wiser seeing that need the um you know my skin is is now damaged Mm. our skin's sun damaged my skin doctor actually suggested to me that um fasting Mm. and how just the autophagy starts to repair the damaged cells Mm. so we schedule it in every month three days on day two i'm a bit hangry yeah same but we, we prepare, we have meals in the freezer yeah. for the kids. And, so and the last stuff. meal is Thursday night, the yeah. next one Sunday night, Yeah, three days. Water, 
lemon water, black coffee, black tea. Yeah, and, and herbal tea. Yeah, and then you just fight through the hangry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and sometimes a bit of lethargy as well. But when your body goes into autophagy, it starts hunting for damaged proteins and it's very, very healthy for you because those damaged proteins, those damaged cells could potentially turn on, turn into cancer, skin cancers, for example. Mm. And do you find that your skin clears up on day yeah. four? Yeah, 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 same. It's, it's, it's funny, like... When, you, when you've got damaged, damaged skin, it's a three-day fast. And at the end of that, you, you look at your skin and it seems to have started to repair. Mm. So we've decided to do it once a month. Yes, yes. Three but fast. we were told that we can by our doctors. So yeah. please don't take this as medical yeah, yeah. advice. If you've got diabetes and yeah. other food-related illnesses, yeah, please speak to a prof- professional. But fasting has been proven to be very, very well, healthy. Well, I, I shared it with um, Benjamin Bulk, who I work with. Yes. And he did it and he, he went a step further and did, I think, 84 hours fasting. And he was How saying... Days? That's four days. <laughs> yeah. I know, <laughs> I'm doing I the math. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> and he, um, he said he felt amazing, just such clarity of mind and... Yeah. and energy in his body Mm. um so yeah because your brain's starting to use ketones for fuel Mm. you've heard of ketosis and people who go into um, ketosis so so he did it so ben if you're listening it's uh time that you did it again (laughs) yeah 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 ben you can't just do it once and think that you're cured for the rest of your life mate you gotta do this regularly i've 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 read I, i i don't know if this is true i haven't confirmed it or not but kelly slater who is still on the world surfing circuit i believe uh, in his 50s so old yeah (laughs) it does 10 day fasts wow and i've i've heard uh, peter atia who who was the guy that was coaching um uh chris hemsworth you know and i've heard him talk and other people do extended fasts Mm. i don't know if i could get past four and a half days is my longest so far that's that's when we had covid Mm. and we were really lethargic and we had no energy i think i was about 40 percent energy and I found a doctor online who was suggesting fasting. Mm. And so I went on a fast. You, d- you did three days, I believe. Yeah, I did four and a half days and cured, gone. All, yeah. of, all of the lethargy was gone. That worked for us. Again, this is not medical advice. Please speak <laughs> to your health professional. What are, you, what are your other routines that uh, bring happiness into your life? Oh, so when I... Kiss the kids of the morning, yep. and at night time, kissing them. We have routines of what we say and what we do mm. um, when you know to go to bed, and yep. the, the different sayings and things. And yep. so, um, the kids know. I know it's to feel good. It's a yep. lovely way to end the day. Yeah. And yeah, it's just. And I think that one of the the things that we've changed up. Um, and some days it's having to try to change it up, making the effort, and other yep. days it's easy, is the the wine of a night time mm. just to, to switch off if you've had a big week or, um, you know, a celebration or whatever. It's that rather than the, the first glass leading into many glasses, it's the switching off that, that one sip or the first yeah. small glass. I, I was actually... really disappointed to learn that this, that, uh, you know, I, I many years ago read research that a glass of wine it, red wine specifically was good for the heart, mm. yeah, because of the resveratrol in it. Right? Yes, but then I've I've read that uh, if you want to get enough resveratrol for it to be good for your heart, you'd need to drink thirty or forty glasses a day. And wow. if you're thinking, I thought yourself, it was liters, liters, forty liters a day, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, Some yeah. so if, if you're currently thinking to yourself, challenge accepted. That's a wrong <laughs> thought. Because it's 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 that first sip that apparently turns off your default mode network, the part mm. of your brain that's always the monkey mind that's always chasing. What oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? You know, it just it, you know that feeling where your brain just switches off. Mm. It's just that first couple of sips, but the, every other sip after that is just pure poison for your body. There is no apparently there is no healthy amount of alcohol for a human being. Mm. It, it's well, it's poison. Your body has to now process and get rid of through your liver. I I know it works even <clears throat> just. If you have a wine glass or a, a lovely glass or a lovely cup, yeah. you can still get that same um, feeling mm. by having tea, coffee, sparkling, sparkling water, water. Yeah. What, whatever your drink is, yeah. you can still get it. So if you sit at a particular seat and table mm. or pub or where, wherever you go, to, which is your signal, mm. your habit of that's, you know, it's wine, wine down time, you can actually do it without... So alcohol it's like a, and it still a works. Talisman, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah it still works. Well, yeah. It, for me, it's it's worked. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So if, if, if I you challenge are, everyone to try it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and if it doesn't work, grab that glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> we are sponsored by... No. Yeah, Bollinger, that's yeah, right. Yeah, man, we're still waiting on Bollinger. Yes. Yeah, but it's that, fir- <laughs> it's that first sip that's having that effect. So do it with, the, do it with some sparkling water. And if you do want to have a, a glass of alcohol to wine down at the end of the day, have it early. Don't have it close to, to sleep Bedtime. because mm. it dramatically affects your sleep in a bad way and sleep is the most important thing that human beings do thank you dr matthew walker the global sleep expert but yeah don't just have it early and then just stop just appreciate the fact that you, the default mode network in your brain has turned off your, mm. your brain is now slower and you can be more present try it with a glass of sparkling water and use it as a as a trigger to slow down but don't lean on three, four, five glasses. It's just so unhealthy for humans. Mm. Mm. So we, we sprinkle golden nuggets throughout our day. Yep. So we have something yep. to work towards. In those days when you are exhausted, when things maybe haven't gone mm. as planned or something comes up that's like not a nice situation, it's just having those little anchors throughout the day to keep you going. To And it's so um, feel... You know, him calling Phil them Goulton, go- yeah. golden nuggets was yeah. perfect. As mm, soon as I heard mm. it, it's like, oh, of course, that's what they are. Another one, uh, Rose, Rosebud Thorn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. to the parents, this is a great one. At the dinner table, hey, guys, what's your rose? What's your rosebud? What's your thorn? Mm. So the rose is something that happened today that went fantastic. Yes. Something, you know, what's a win you had? What's, what's, what was your best moment of the day? Uh, thorn, what's something that didn't go the way you planned and what did you learn from it? Yeah. And then Rosebud, what is something that you're looking forward to? It's a great way of getting the kids to structure a conversation around, around the table mm. instead of, you know, them fighting and kicking and pushing each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, guys, all right, what's your rose? What, what's, your, what's your thorn? Uh, and what's your Rosebud? What are you looking forward to? Those, those routines. We, we need to be sitting around a table discussing our days with children. It's a, it's a great memory for them when they get older. It's a great way to create that family unit. Mm. Um, we do everything around the dining table, don't we? We do. We do art and everything. Yeah. Um, my favourite routine is I, I wake my son up in the morning, he's 10, go in, give him a hug, and he just throws his arms around me, squeezes me so tightly, and we, we both say in unison, best time of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes for a walk off, and, and then in the evenings, 15 minutes of reading Harry Potter together in bed. It's our favourite story. I've read them now four times <laughs> with, my, with my kids. Um, he, he's the youngest and we're going, I think we're on book four and, and yeah, read a bit of Harry Potter, you know, another big hug and, you know, love you, mate, have a great night's sleep. Oh, those, it's, it's those routines that bring, bring quality into your life. Yeah. Mm. No. So to wrap up, yep. it's the it's not the goal. The goal gives you purpose and direction. Mm-hmm. So, but don't hang your hat on the goal yep. as as you will be happy when. Yeah. And just plant nuggets throughout your day mm. and whatever that looks like. We get up early. We're morning people mm. and we're very productive yep. in the morning. Yep. But other people might be on the other end of the day. Yeah. Do it at the end of the day. Yeah. Or in the middle. Do what works for you. But if if you find just little things that you can make it a habit a routine yeah like laughter listening to stand-up comedy Mm. being grateful yeah you know listing all the things that you're grateful for get your mind feeling like you've got an abundance and then your body doesn't have to stress anymore because you don't need to fight for anything that's right start small don't don't you know structure your day so that there's no no uh, leeway for anything going off off track but just small little nuggets even one if you if you don't have any start with one with one and yeah yeah. Honestly, it's it uh, it helps. Mm. So goals don't create happiness; they just give you direction. They're important; they just give you direction. But happiness lies in what we do every day, the journey, the Absolutely. routines. Yeah, mm. yeah. Bollinger, love it. where are you? Bollinger, um, we're still waiting. <laughs> Lint, Lint, Lint Le- yeah, Lint. We love Lint chocolate. Yeah, um, Bose, Bose. Anyone, anyone who wants to sponsor the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone, really? How selfish are we? <laughs> we enjoy doing this. We'll keep doing it anyway. That's right. Uh, more dogs? More dogs. The world will be a better place with more dogs. So if you want some merch with some uh, great messaging on it, we've got T-shirts and hats. Uh, and everyone that's uh, bought one and given us feedback said they're a re- real conversation starter. That's right. Yeah. And every time we wear them, people walk up and go, yeah, the world. Love your more T-shirt. Dogs. Yeah, love your it. hat. Oh, yeah. yeah, more dogs. So. Anyway. So good to see you, Michelle. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, guys. I need you. (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs) Well, that was fun. That was fun. (laughs) 
Du er such a clown. The clown. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Captain. Yeah, <laughs> And who's gonna listen to this? <laughs> Maybe our mums. Thanks, mum.